There is some huge developments going on with the IFBB and this whole scandal. You guys saw the article in the Washington Post. It's insane. I want to go over what I think about it. If I think this outrage is warranted or I don't know, it's controlled outrage. I think some people who have an ax to grind with the IFBB are grinding it. I think that, you know, let's just say that bodybuilding is a sport based on the body based on presenting the body, based on sexuality. Um, look at bikini. There's very, very suggestive poses. With that being said, I'm going to talk about this, and I'm going to also tell you where the liabilities are. But before, just hear me out. Boom! Look, man, I'm 42 years old. I get joint pain. So I set out to create the greatest joint care formula ever, that's machine motion. So all you guys, I get all this question like glucosamine. Is glucosamine, does it work? And the answer is, well, sort of, but not really. It's been well surpassed by better ingredients. So check it out. This not only has a super potent curcumin extract, the most advanced uh, turmeric for joint health, but it also has this thing called Tamiflex, which is an exciting new joint care ingredient specifically proven in human studies. This isn't rat studies. It's not in vitro to improve joint health and function. Also has fully loaded dose of Cystus quadrangularis, hyaluronic acid, and bioprene. So I made this for myself because I'm old and I get aches and pains. I'll tell you what, it's the best on the market. Can't beat it. Available at Tiger Fitness. Get it now. But let's get back to the IFBB. Okay. What's going on with that? Well, here's what we know. What we know is that up until 2015, you know, J.M. Mannion was, and we can say was because this wasn't a secret. That's why it's like people are pretending that this just happened and it didn't. J.M. Mannion is not a director of the IFBB. J.M. Mannion is not managing the shows. He's not promoting the shows. What J.M. Mannion does is he works in the IFBB and he manages athletes. And at the time, not only did he have the management company, but J.M. also had a, well, let's say a photography business, a videography business. Um, you always see J.M. at trade shows. I've seen him there for years. Camera around his neck, always taking pictures. And honestly, all the pictures you see on the NPC website are J.M.'s work. J.M. is probably one of the hardest working Photo photography guys I've ever seen in my life. And I want to go into why my opinion can either be cast aside as biased or cast aside or, or actually accepted as the most unbiased opinion ever. It just depends on where you sit. But if I'm biased in my mind, it's not because I intend to be biased. It's not because I'm just preserving the organization that afforded me um, the opportunity to earn an IFBB pro card. Um, it's because I have bias because I like the individual. So I want to say that bias is a definite possibility, but I like to think that my brain is beyond that. Crack open this ghost real quick. Thirsty, I'm sorry. Uh, this, uh, By the way, we also sell these at tigerfitness.com, right? Just had to say it. I got bills to pay, man. YouTube, YouTube money ain't what it used to be when I started this. So here's the, here's the gist. Let me, get, let me not get into all specifics. Basically, there are a bunch of sites provocative photos, sometimes nude photos. I've never seen the nude photos because I never never really went to the sites, to be honest with you. But we all know that JM is a photographer. We all know that JM is an art guy, like he loves art. JM's also, to his credit, and just to give you a background and my knowledge of JM, I don't think anyone's ever credited that JM is an awesome family man. He's an awesome father, and he's an awesome husband from what I hear. And I've gotten a chance to know the Mannions, especially JM, over the past couple of years. Now, for those of you who don't know the entire story, back in around 2015, 2014 even, and 2013, I was the biggest hater for the IFBB. And it wasn't because I couldn't earn a pro card. Um, it was because I saw some things that I didn't like. So I aired grievances and it was mainly against a couple of promoters who have since been exposed and the Mannions did the right thing and got rid of them. Now, I aired these grievances in, the, in, the, in that instance. I took some shots at the Mannions, which was I completely apologized for later on because they were incorrect and I was wrong. So I have brought up these photos and the management thing. So here's my perspective now. Uh, again, I'm, I'm seven years older. 
I believe I have more ability to look into situations, not jump to conclusions. JM, the worst thing I can see happening with the evidence that I have, which I believe is evidence everyone else has, is at most this was a conflict of interest. Um, JM doing photography on the side, you know, the, or, the problem is he's, his client base is his dad's business, but any family business is going to have things like that. Like, right. Like, let's say if I own a manufacturing company and there's a printer I refer to all the time, well, Jim owns or he runs the IFBB. If someone asks for a good photographer to get shots, I'm going to recommend my son. It's what he does. Right. So, so there's that partnership thing that's going on there. Right. But I do see that the main issue I have, again, barring all, uh, there's supposedly more information coming out, is the fact this was a conflict of interest. It just was, whether it was intentional or non intentional. And I believe that's why in 2015, despite the fact that, let's be honest, no one loses money on, on websites with nude women on it. So they shut it down in 2015. And you want to ask why? And my opinion is they probably realized that it wasn't the best look for the organization. So it's done. So fast forward seven years, all we're seeing in the Washington Post is stuff we knew. And then allegations, which are, you know, until proven correct, who knows, right? So what we know is that J.M. Mannion managed athletes. We also know that J.M. Mannion had um, a photography business where he photographed competitors. Um, and then we know that the photographs were risque. Now, no one ever forced me to take my clothes off and take pictures. That is an adult decision. That is something that should have been brought up at the time. I'm not one to say that you can't bring up past wrongdoings, but it just seems that that's our atmosphere right now. The whole me too movement. I'm not, again, I'm not minimizing. I have a wife and a daughter. So please, please do not take it as me doing that. But after the Kavanaugh thing on the Supreme court, um, Clarence Thomas, you look at everything that goes on. It seems that every time someone wants to take someone down, all of a sudden there's a harem of women that come out with allegations of sexual misconduct from years ago. So my question is, they've already corrected it, allegedly, right? Like, this happened in 2015. They've already corrected it. It's been seven years since they shut these things down. Is it really, really for the victims that were doing this? Or is someone trying to take the IFBB down? I heard Nick Trujilli talk about Wayne D'Amelia doing something. As someone who's known about and worked alongside, never with Wayne D'Amelia, I wouldn't trust that guy as far as I could throw him. It's just crazy that all of a sudden this is popping up after all these years. The problem is it's here. So how do you mitigate this? How do you work with it? Number one, changing of the guard, right? Tyler Mannion is more than capable of running the IFBB. Tyler Mannion is very good at what he does. He's been raised in the business and he'll do a great job. Steve Weinberger with him there, phenomenal. You can't find a better organization head right now, in my opinion. Weinberger, Tyler, I think we're in good shape. So what do you do about Jim and JM? Jim loves bodybuilding. It's, it's what he does. It's who he is. But I think that stepping down... Um, and, and Jim, Jim's earned it, dude. Like Jim's been hustling and working his butt off and being at all these shows for more years than I've even been alive. He's been doing this for decades. So maybe it's time to pass the torch to Tyler, regardless of what happens on the legal stand. As far as JM's concern, his photography business is great. You know, I know that there's, I heard he's not going to be at any IFBB shows. I, I don't see how that's an issue. But again, like I understand for optics and for the preservation organization, that might be a move. 
There's two options. Number one is IFBB says, screw you, this is all fake news. We're going to fight it till the day we die. Number two is you, you do this, you issue an apology, you do an internal investigation, make sure it's not happening anymore, and you move forward with your new CEO and, of course, his, um, his supporters or her supporters. So here's the problem, though. From what I hear, it's culminating in a class action suit. And heading that suit is one Lisa Bloom. Lisa Bloom is big time. I'm talking Epstein, Weinstein type stuff. She is the cream of the crop when it comes to dealing with cases like this. So what happens? Shit, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm looking at this from the outside, looking in as someone with vested interest in bodybuilding, who's very proud to be a, a pro bodybuilder, but at the same time, it doesn't pay my bills. It actually probably cost me money. So I'm able to look at it from that perspective. And it's going to be an ugly case. And the best bet with a Lisa Bloom type thing is to probably probably settle. Like your goal is will be a settlement, one that you can afford. Um, it's going to be millions of dollars. Like it just is. But if there's this much proof and if Lisa Bloom has taken this case, they have ground. Or at least they have enough evidence for a class action to keep you in court for a very long time. I personally have been involved in multiple class action lawsuits on, on both sides. And let me tell you what, win or lose, you're spending tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, period. So that's where it's at. So where are we at? You keep hearing all these, you know, bodybuilding's dirty and take them down. That's not, the, that's not it. That's not it. Bodybuilding is a sexualized sport. You have men in literally eye patches covering their crotch and women bending over and looking back at it on stage. No matter what we do, we are presenting the body. When it comes to presenting the body, you're always in a susceptible or vulnerable position. So now that you have this situation where there are pictures taken, two girls in bed cuddling, whatever it was, naked, you know, honestly, that's kind of kind of how the industry is. Like, there's a dark side to bodybuilding. There's a Generation Iron, I believe, put out a movie. I'm watching it. It's something Sally, um, where this woman shot her bodybuilder husband. I haven't, I've only watched the first 20 minutes of it. But bodybuilding, you know, is, you know, the whole G for P thing, which for those who don't know, and again, this is not a homophobic slur, gay for pay, $20 is $20. Like, bodybuilding always has sexual over and undertones because bodybuilding is a sexualized sport. You know, like this is the only sport where I can send a picture of my ass to another guy and he'll be like, good looking butt, bro. It's just one of those things where it's always going to be there. So what happened is best case scenario or at the very least is that there was a potential conflict of interest. That is the least, least, you know, the, that is, that is the, that's, we know that that could be a question, whether it was a conflict of interest. So the question is, is there evidence to take down the Mannions. I don't know. And supposedly there's more articles to come from the Washington Post, but I want you guys to sit back and before breaking out the pitchforks and the ropes, I need you to calm down and let the evidence come forth. I read the Washington Post article and people sent it to me like it was something that's going to just blow my mind and be big and crazy. And to be dead honest with you, it did none of that for me. It was basically stating that JM took pictures some promoters thought that if they did the pictures, not promoters, but managers of athletes, um, thought that if they took the pictures that they'd be favored in winning shows. And a lot of women who refused to take the pictures, you know, they, they, they placed low, whether they placed low because they looked bad or because they didn't, I, I don't know. But from what I can tell, and I know a lot of judges, you know, at least to this day right now, my bet would be this would never happen. Whether it happened in 2015, you know, there were some judges that were a little sideways, right? There were some state chairmen that were a little bit sideways. But I've said this on the record on this channel many times before. There is no better objective sport. I'm sorry, no better subjective sport than bodybuilding. I think the judging is fair. I think that people lose because they're not in shape. And I think that being that it's subjective, judges can vary from show to show, from state to state. So you could have someone get first place one show and fifth place the next against the same lineup. 
And that's just how it is. And if you're in this sport, that's the thing. But there's also a moral and ethical code. So let's play devil's advocate. Let's say that someone said to get your pro card, you have to take nude photos. So when I was in college, I didn't have any money. And I was a pretty good looking young, young lad, I'd say. And I was offered to go strip for both males and females for money that I probably would never, that I would never make doing what I was doing, training people and, you know, selling shoes at big five sporting goods. So I had that dilemma, but I knew that that went beyond my ethical and moral boundaries. And there's no way I'm going to sacrifice that. So the problem is no matter what, you know, somebody either lacked the moral and ethical code to not do this or somebody utilized power to coerce somebody to do this. Either way, this sucks. It really does. However, if you take your clothes off and take pictures, that's an adult decision. And if you think a pro card is worth that, that's an adult decision. Now, me saying that does not in any way say that I am saying that number one, that happened, that JM and others forced people to do that, which I find unlikely. I think enough women are willing to take pictures for money that you don't have to coerce anybody. Um, number two, I just, um, I just don't think that people are, are seeing this for what it is. And that is the fact that this happened a long time ago. And why is it coming up now? So I really want to see how this transpires, but Man, I'm hoping the best because bodybuilding is actually on an upswing. You got Chris Bumstead with more friggin' likes and followers than, uh, than the Kardashians. You got a great Olympia with Rami and Nick and Brandon and all these guys bringing their best. And I don't want it overshadowed by this. But anyway, guys, just listen to things. Don't jump to conclusions. And look, man, if it is proven that there was some shady stuff going on, you know me, I'll be the first one to come up and say, yep, Yep, that was incorrect, that was wrong, and heads need to roll. But right now, I think we need to sit back and wait to see. Do we really want to trust the Washington Post with all of this information? Let's wait for more to come out. Let's wait to see what Lisa Bloom and colleagues bring in the court of law, which is public record, and take it from there. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts. Comment down below, like this video, subscribe to this channel, click on notification bell, and of course, buy all your supplements from tigerfitness.com. That's not a game. Training intensity is everything. If you want to build muscle, if you want to get better, if you want to go hard, you need to train intense. A lot of pre-workouts, they get you intense. But then what happens? You crash. A lot of pre-workouts, they give you the pump. But then what happens? It wears off. A lot of pre-workouts, they'll give you all that stuff, but it doesn't add to your endurance. I want to be able to lift heavy. I want to be able to feel the pump. I want veins bulging from every single part of my body. I want to lift heavier weights every single time. I want to run farther. I want to run faster. I want to push harder. And I want to get bigger, stronger, and faster. And that's why I created Clash 3D. This pre-workout is next level, featuring 3D pump, Vaso Drive AP, and a lot of other epic ingredients. Guys, this is the pre-workout that you need to take your workouts and your performance and your physique to the next level.